Well, I'm here today with Rob Tiller. What I want to do now is have a bit more of a chat to Rob and talk about some of his real areas of expertise and how perhaps you can help uh, by referring people to him, by finding counselling uh, clients for him, not only in Western Australia, but across Australia or the world. I mean, you mm. can help people across the world, Rob. I talk to people on Skype. Yeah, because yeah. I've all been referring pe people to him from Sydney, from all sorts of places, and he does telephone counselling and um, Skype counselling. So Absolutely. it's a real possibility. And also, the, I want people to know a bit more about the areas where you've been running workshops and potential areas where you could run workshops. So I, I suppose the exciting thing is you can now run workshops about the things that really you're really interested in rather than what Relationships Australia are approved of. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and I have all sorts of great ideas. <laughs> but I want to go back and, and talk about sort of the areas, one of the areas where I've referred people to you, which is men. And the fact that uh, men are really struggling in their lives mm. for very good reason. I mean, there's a reason why five out of the seven people who kill themselves every day in Australia are, are male. Mm. And you've been, I'm sure you've had years and years and years of listening to men talk about struggling to be able to see their kids after divorce, Absolutely. about parental alienation, but, and it must be so tragic watching what men are going through. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a real tricky time for men, yeah. as you well know, Bettina. Yeah. And, and I've really, in some aspects, you know, outside my couple work, which I'm really passionate about, I've dedicated my work to, uh, work, my professional work to, to, to supporting men. Yeah, um, through those sorts of issues, the struggling with family. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of clients that I see that are going through the family court um, process and, and essentially being isolated from yeah. their children. Yeah. And, and, and isolated from everybody. I mean, they get off and no support, no exactly. counselling. And the reason men kill themselves, the reason men, men sometimes act out and do dreadful things in terms of Because they're hopeless. Kids, is because we don't support them at all. Mm. Yeah. Mm. They feel hopeless and they feel just right right on the edge of, well, everything that I've spent my life working for, I don't, I've lost. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it, it is a real process to help a man come back from that place. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a real potential for, to do workshops, more workshops in that area. Absolutely. To reach out to men. But of course, a lot of men want to talk privately about that. And, and they feel there's no one they can talk to. Well, and I mean, if, if I could say anything, the, the, and I think this, this is one thing I do share with my male clients who are in, in a kind of parental alienation situation is that you're not, you know, there are a lot of men in the same boat. Yeah. And just knowing that lifts, lifts them a bit, gives them a bit of relief. But, yeah. but it certainly doesn't change the circumstances. And, and I've talked to men who... Uh, have worked their whole lives and they're essentially sleeping on someone's sofa yeah. and they burnt, you know, a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars in lawyer fees because yeah. they're so committed to to seeing their children. And just to give them strategies to survive that. Well exactly. And and, and part of yeah. and part of that is, you know, a wake up call in terms of you know, hey, this is how the system works. This is what you can expect. Yeah. So, painting a clear picture of 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 the the course ahead, and not and not uh, uh, watering it down with you know by blowing smoke up their yeah. backside. And the real worry is a lot of those people who went go for counselling don't get hurt. Hmm. I mean, I, I, I've always struggled to find people to refer. You know, when men come to me in clearly in despair and hmm. really at risk of suicide, or you know, you can just see they're on the edge. To know where to send them has hmm. always been a big problem, which is why I've been sending people to you. Um, and that, but that's just one area. I mean, there are a whole lot of there are other areas that are rather more cheerful. I mean, I suppose hmm. I've always got a, a, a soft spot for the, the nerdy young man. Hmm. <laughs> and uh, I did work actually really early in my career on trying to give social skills mm. as part of my clinical psychology course to give social skills to men who are struggling with women mm. and that's a, you know and, and dealing with rejection I mean a guy who's socially awkward and shy and mm. you know I mean, it's just 
No, I mean, I can speak business. from personal experience. Yeah. So. And that's what you do. I mean, I've always found that very endearing that you're mm. willing to talk to people and say, I've been through that and this is what, how I've come out of it. Mm. And one of the things we have discussed, for instance, is the whole issue of game. Mm. People who don't know about game, it, I mean, it, well, you could explain what, what it's about. Well, I mean, I guess my, my interest is, I think we were talking about this recently, the idea of or what I call ethical game yeah. in terms of... Uh, What's, what's that, what was it, hump and dump? Yeah, I mean, a game is essentially about uh, some very clever men have gone out and tried to work out how to, help, how to help men pick up women. Right. And some of them promote a pretty ruthless approach to that. It's a mm. sort of vengeance of the nerds, I always say. <laughs> Revenge of the nerds. <laughs> and revenge of the, yeah. Um, hump and dump, they call it. Yeah. And it's about, you know, okay, we're going to get our own back and we're going to go to bed many, many women. As many can, women as we because can. Because we've been mm. so rejected. Of it. And mm. Yeah, that's one approach. But I mean, I'll tell you a really funny story. I was once <laughs> on a date and this guy was really skilled. I mean, he did every, what I know now, and I knew at the time actually, was straight out of the, the sort of game songbook, if you like. You know, he would stroke me briefly on the arm. He'd you know, lean in towards me. He did all the things, you know, to show he kind was really, in, connection really interested in me and found me totally fascinating. Mm. And I called him out at one point. I said, <laughs> you have learned games. I've read this book too, buddy. <laughs> and, he had, and, he, and it was very funny. He, he joined an online course. But yeah. the point about game, which is always, of course, totally demolished by the feminists and even in mainstream media mm. it's always presented as some ghastly you know misogynist, misogynist mm. attack on women mm. but at, at its heart it's got some real issues that are very important for men in terms of giving males confidence to deal with confidence to deal with the humiliating business of approaching women and being rejected Absolutely. and how to do better in that business mm. and ethical game as you say is something that Lots of men can benefit from, hmm. and I've been referring males to you for that sort of counselling for many years. And 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 it, well, like you were saying before, I mean, it's been a it's been a work in progress for me, and you know, like I've taken some of those those tools and put them into practice. You know, when I've been single, to to over time build up my confidence because, I, and I, I I don't think this is one thing that most women understand. Yeah because generally women are on the receiving end of the approach. And yep. so then they get to make the decision of, you know. <laughs> yeah, and they do spend, you know, most of them spend their whole 20s rejecting men. And then of course, when I, I, I spent five <laughs> years doing relationship counseling, mainly with old women who are so pissed off that all of a sudden the boot is on the other foot. <laughs> <laughs> and they're really indignant that these men are rejecting them. Hmm. And I say to them, You've had your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that at all. No. Um, that, that's part. So that, I mean, there are lots of issues. Well, it is. It's, yeah. And it's just around raising confidence in, in yeah. terms of, well, how do you, how do you push through that, that natural instinctual fear um, when you're approaching some, uh, a lady that you're attracted to yeah. and express your interest in a way that's invitational so that it, it increases your chances of, of, of winning her winning her attention yeah hmm. and you know there's a lot of rubbish out there you know about pickup lines and, and it's nothing to do no. with that i mean it's, it's about just about being natural and con and and but how to get some confidence in that territory and i think it's really important hmm. and it's and it's a lot easier than i think most guys make out but i think you know you have to deal with that initial fear and it that that that's that's that, difficult yeah. that's 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 a work it, it it takes practice yeah it takes practice and the other area we've talked a lot about is the fact that lots of men have come to me over the years complaining about counselling. I mean, that's one of the re relationships. Australia generally has a pretty dreadful reputation in terms of not hearing men, not giving men fair treatment. Well, there was there was a uh, it might have been five six years ago uh, at a, a professional. Uh, colleague not within the organization within the community asked me why are you working for these guys yeah. they, they, they are not pro men yeah. and and I guess well part of my mission and that and I'm not speaking about my my professional colleagues I work with I think most of them are exceptional practitioners uh, it's more the attitude mm -hmm. of the agency the the kind of ethos in terms of uh, 
you know, well, if a couple is having a problem, what has he done? Yeah. Is, mm-hmm. is, is kind of a nutshell. And, and I guess, you know, in terms of uh, my intention was to learn the skills to support men both in their relationships and personally to, to just uh, kind of take their own life by the horns. Yeah, and, and, and have a chance of having an impact on her. I mean, one of the things that I hear from a lot of men particularly is that by the time they got to counselling, she was already out the door. And the whole counselling was about the, the female counsellor helping her make good decisions about leaving him. Mm. And they, didn't, they felt they never had a chance of saving that marriage. And that's the reason they went in for counselling. Mm. And it's a really sad thing. I, years ago, I wrote this article about mm. marriage counselling generally and about the fact that a lot of counsellors have no commitment whatsoever to saving marriages. Mm. Um, they don't even begin to try to do that. And funnily enough, one of my friends who's a psychologist was mentioned in that article because mm. she, she starts the other way around. She says she will look first at trying to see whether that marriage can be put together again. Can you find some way of people, you know, learning how to communicate effectively and, and you know, work out ways of living with each other? And she, it's like 15 years later, she still gets referrals through my article mm. because it's, it's like hen's teeth finding a counsellor who's really hearing both sides and saying, let's just give this another go first. Mm. And you've done all the work in that area. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's the hardest couple's work to do. And yeah. so I understand why a lot of couples therapists struggle with it because if if one partner i mean and i think statistically 70 percent of relationships are ended by the female yeah. so, so it's almost always the women hmm. who've already made the decision and they've yeah. made it a, a few you know either a year or two yeah. years back and and they're just waiting for the right time yeah the right and they time. want their counseling to help him accept the hmm. fact that it's all over and so if i get a whiff of that uh you know i'll challenge it in in those early sessions and say hey what are we doing here so yeah. i'll actually call it out and then if if there's some if there's some uh, and and generally they're coming in a high state of crisis so then it's a matter of what, what are those things called that you give uh, someone who's had a heart attack defibrillator <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right because that's it, you need you need a swift high impact intervention that's going to shift the trajectory and at least say is this are you here because you you wanted yeah. to leave him you know yeah. but i mean but you sometimes manage to get people back from the brink can't absolutely you? You know, yeah it's really the be, it's the best work yeah, yeah. and particularly these guys i mean because this tragedy of men who don't even know what hit them who because they're blindsided yeah and they have no idea they're about to lose their families and all the things that will consequences that will follow mm. from that um, to give some men a chance of hanging on to their families mm. must be a fantastic thing to do. Absolutely, and I mean, and, and part of it is challenging them. It's like they, they get some insight in terms of, because a lot of time I notice the women might not necessarily communicate their disdain or yeah. they might just bottle it and bottle it for years and years and then that works into a head of resentment that they then use to mm move out of the relationship yeah. in the relationship and so then part of the conversation is to him you know getting him to think about well you know how can you invest or reinvest in ways in your relationship that yeah. are that are going to rebuild it yeah and, and are you willing to so I, yeah and yeah. I, I challenge i challenge i challenge the guys a lot yeah well both sides which is well, exactly what, what's important and look, there are good counsellors out there who are doing that. Absolutely. But, you know, it, but what I'm saying is it's the yeah. hardest work. And yeah. I think it takes the most skill to be able to hold a, a male and a female partner to account. Yeah. And in general, I think most people, if the guy shows his, you know, he, he, guys generally express their hurt feelings through grumpy yeah. angry with silence withdrawal. or yeah. or silence and withdrawal so they they stonewall or they mm-hmm. they get get snarky yeah and 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 
And then the female counselor gets pissed off with it. Exactly. And then, of course she's leaving him. <laughs> and goes offside. Yeah. Whereas if she was actively kind of or, or reading his behavior correctly, he's, he's suffering. Yeah. And if she treated him like a crying woman. Yeah. You must see that yeah. all the time. Men who come across really badly because of the way they're dealing with the stress of that situation. You don't know how many times I've heard from men who this is their last shot at couples counseling sitting in an office with me. They, they, they tell me, in the last couples, with the last couples counselor, I had the target on my head. I was the bad guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope some of those men in that situation will reach out to you, Rob. Oh. I mean, I just think, that, hmm. I think it's really important that you're there as someone they can talk to and maybe do, you know, can you do couple counseling by Skype? Of course. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe, it's, maybe people find that more comfortable sometimes than, than mm. doing it face to face. But of course, in Western Australia, they could all come running to see you. <laughs> they can, <laughs> yeah. And also, we'll be you know, talking about the, the workshops. Mm. And we're going to put up a whole list of workshops you might want to run. And one of the things I'd like people to do, if you've got venues you can offer for you mm. to run, you know, free venues That'd be short great. term mm. to come, you know, help you establish regular workshops and, and contribute in other an, ways. That's yeah. an area of passion for me. I really, I really like the, the workshop and the, the, I guess the, the relationship education side of things yeah. and working with a group. It's, yeah. it's, uh, there's just so much energy. Energy. And excitement. And particularly men. I mean, I the fact that you mm. also do workshops just with men. Absolutely. And yeah. that's a rare experience for mm. men to hear, talk about these sort of personal issues in a, in a sort of safe place mm. where they feel comfortable. And, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So that'll be good. All right, Rob, the campaign is about to begin and I want everybody to maintain the rage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Patina. Lovely to have yeah. you here.